Bumblebees delivered by the box from UPS? What? Stay tuned and I'll explain. Today I'm going to show you guys how greenhouse tomatoes are pollinated. So a few days ago we received our first box of bumblebees from Michigan to assist us with the pollination of our greenhouse tomatoes. Let's go take a closer look at these things. So here is the smallest hive that you're able to order. This box has several hundred bees in it, I'm guessing, and will last about six to eight weeks before it runs its course and another box has to be ordered. The hole on the left is their entrance and the hole on the right is where they exit. So I can push this down. Now no bees can get out and sting me, but they can still return. So if I need to move this box to another greenhouse, that's the, that's the position I would put it in. There, one just returned. I don't know if you saw that. I'm going to close this up and give you a closer look inside. I'm not sure if you can hear that, but they are angry right now because I opened their box. I'll take the entire box out real quick here for you. underneath is I call it a jelly bag it's like sugar water or nectar of some kind that the bees survive on all right so I'm gonna open this up and we'll see if a bee exits oh there's one these bees are very docile I've probably only been stung once or twice in the last decade so you can work right alongside the bees as long as your hands are not right next to the bees bothering them and disturbing them while they're doing their work there's never anything to worry about the reason i have the bumblebee box propped up on a cinder block in a small tub of water is to keep the ants from climbing inside the box to get to the sweet nectar bag that's on the bottom they can cause a lot of damage to the bees so this is the easiest way to keep them out the bees are necessary to assist in pollination of the greenhouse tomatoes because it's such a calm, still environment inside here. Pollination of the tomato blossoms can happen in one of three ways. First, just natural occurring wind or breeze coming through can pollinate the flowers. Two, we have to manually vibrate the cluster of flowers on the tomato plant whether that be from a some kind of vibrating tool like an uh, electric toothbrush would work actually. But uh, that takes a lot of work and you have to walk through and do it to every plant like every day or every other day. So the easiest way is option three and that is to let the bumblebees do the work for you. So when I start seeing blossoms forming on the tomato plants, we order our first hive of bees. They are shipped to UPS from Michigan, arrive in two days, I open up the box and out come the bees to come out and do the hard work. So the bees land on the tomato blossoms. They know when they're ready. They know when the transfer of pollen is ready to take place. They bite the flower as you can see here and they vibrate their wings and cause the transfer of pollen from the stamen to the pistil or pistil to the stamen, whichever it is, I always forget. But uh, that process is taken care of by the bees and after they've done that, uh, there will be a tomato forming several days later. Now, as you can see here, the uh, flowers are actually look like they're sucked dry because the bees have landed on them so many times and bitten them so many times that there is uh, actually bruising to the blossom and it turns brown, starts shriveling up and you will see a tomato there in less than a few days. You may be wondering why bumblebees? Because in the outdoors, there are many wild bees of many different types that take care of the pollination on many fruit and vegetable crops. Indoors, this time of year, there are no wild bees flying around. And the other option is honeybees. 
Honeybees are responsible for most of the pollination of fruit and vegetable crops around the world. But indoors, they do a poor job and they're always coming and going. And when you have your greenhouse closed up, there's no way for them to get in to do the pollination. So domesticated bumblebees are the best option and they do a really, really fantastic job. See how he lands on the flower? He bites it and walks all around on it, vibrating it. And that's how he does his thing. Spends quite a bit of time on there. Here's a bee getting ready to exit. That's probably a soldier bee ready to attack me if I get too close. And for some reason, they entered through the exit. That is not normal. I don't know why he's doing that. He's supposed to go in on the left. Often what we see is one or two tomatoes that form first, and then the remaining flowers are still being pollinated, and eventually they will also form tomatoes a few days later. There's a bee busy at work right there on that flower. Finally starting to see some nice looking pea size and marble sized tomatoes throughout the greenhouse. There's some nice looking marble sized tomatoes that will be ready for harvest in probably five weeks or less. All right guys, that's all I really wanted to show you today. Just some baby green tomatoes and our box of bumblebees. So grateful for these bees. They saved me a lot of time and energy spent in this greenhouse and I can concentrate on other things around the farm. So thanks for tuning in. See you guys on the next video. I just about got attacked by a bee. Ah, he's mad. They land on the yellow tomato blossom. Ugh, thought I was getting stung. <laughs>